here's the thing. <laughs> okay, so when I was in high school, and I think it was algebra two. I, I forget where limits are introduced into math, but you learn about um, basically numbers that approach another number, but never, never touch the number. So if you've seen Mean Girls, for instance, I think, I think the last question. The limit the does not exist. Is, <laughs> is what is the limit of this equation? The limit doesn't exist, right? So you have these, I think they're called asymptotes, which is like the line that they approach, but they never touch it. I used to play around with this. And one thing that I always noticed was that if you divide by a number, the bigger the number gets, the higher the line goes. And so, for instance, to explain what this, what I mean by this. So two divided by one is two, right? Two divided by 0.1, though, is 20, right? And two divided by 0 0.0 zero one or zero one is 200. So the lower that number gets on the bottom, the higher the number goes, right? So the number, so if you graph this on a chart, you see that the lower the number gets, the higher the curve is going. And the, the curve is going higher and higher as the number at the bottom approaches zero, right? So now what is something that you all learned in math? What is a number divided by zero? Nothing. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's undefined, right? That's what they tell you. <laughs> That's what they tell you in This math. is the lie. <laughs> but in reality, if you think about it, the lower that number gets, the higher the, the other number is going. And so the, what it should be, what it should be is infinity. infinity infinity that's not what math tells you what math tells you is you can't do it it's undefined why is that it doesn't make any is sense it and it's never made but any is it sense. infinity also undefined like the the definition well, of infinity is actually that it's undefined <laughs> Model. here's what's fascinating about this and what ties back to what alice said and this is why if you think about it math falls apart at this point it, dividing by zero math falls apart and with it everything that that is built on that physics, everything falls apart when you divide by zero. Let's talk about Einstein. So Einstein back in the twenties, actually before the twenties, he is thinking about gravity. He's thinking about gravity and how gravity works. And under Newtonian physics, gravity is attraction between large objects. So the sun's really big. And so it attracts all the planets and they go around the sun and the, and the earth is bigger than the moon. So the earth, so the moon is attracted to the earth and it goes around the earth and we are attracted to the earth and everything else. Right. And it makes sense and it works. This is what's amazing about physics. That idea works perfectly in 99% of the situations you're ever going to be in, but there was a problem with it. And that was how does gravity work across large distances? How can it be that this force is exerted over large distances? And even, even Newton said, you got me. <laughs> like I have no idea. Right. And, and, and basically said, look, there's, there is a problem here. There's a problem in my own physics that I can't explain. And for hundreds of years, no one could explain it. And people tried different things, but they couldn't explain it. And then Einstein comes along and he changes fundamentally the way we look at gravity. And he says, look, it's not an attraction. It's space itself being folded by large masses. So the, the sun is creating this massive distortion in space. And that distortion causes everything that's traveling to go around the sun because essentially it's trying to travel in a straight line, but because of this massive depression, it, it goes around, right? It curves, it causes objects to curve. And so that's how space, that's how space and time and gravity works. So Einstein came up with these really complicated equations these field equations to describe gravity they're really complicated and he sends them out to all his sort of physicist friends and to say hey you know this is this is my theory this is what i think can you solve these really complicated equations and one ends up and i forget which scientist it was but he's he's actually he's like in the german army at the time like helping them aim their artillery which and he gets Einstein's equation. So one day when he's not, you know, firing off 
artillery in World War I, he's thinking about this equation. And what he does is he sits down and he thinks about, let me, let me, do, let me do the simplest thing I can do. Because really, when you get into these complex math ideas, it really all becomes philosophy. So he sits down and he thinks about, OK, what if I had a point in space and it's, you know, it has it's just a point in space. So it has no diameter, nothing like that. How would that work in this whole equation? So its diameter is zero because it's a point in space. And he fills out this whole equation and it works. But there's a problem. There's a problem because when he does the field equation, there are two places in the equation where he ends up because of the way he's defined this point in space dividing by zero, which, you know, undefined, undefined, right? But what he realizes is what that means is at that point in space, when you divide by zero, the mass there and the effect on gravity would be infinite. And what is that when you have an infinite effect on gravity at a singular point in space? A singularity, a black hole. A singularity, a black hole. So at the dividing by zero is what gives you a black hole, Infinity. which is something so bizarre that for a long time, people didn't even think they existed. They thought this was a flaw. This was a flaw in Einstein's thing. In fact, I think um, Stephen Hawking's. He initially didn't think black holes could exist and they had like a bet. And then eventually they decided, nope, they absolutely exist. In fact, they're the center of every galaxy. So all of math, all of physics tells you that this can't happen. And when it does happen, it's this, it's that point, that universe destroying point of the singularity. So that's, so is that's it that the math ultimate never caught up? It's not that math. math gets destroyed. First of all, that was brilliant. I hope all of you listen to that and rewind it and listen to it again. <laughs> But is it that infinity does exist? Okay, because so no one no one quite knows what a black hole is because you can't go into a black hole and survive. And it is the reason it's black is because it literally sucks in all energy that no light can escape. And that's why it's black, right? Black is not a color. Right. It's the absence of light. So it's not it's that it's not that asymptotes are messed up. It's that math never caught up to Leibniz's point that it was so massive. And maybe because it's such a massive concept that all the brains of all like Students studying math, their brains would just get crushed like a singularity if they ever were to think about it as something other than undefined. So undefined is actually a concept which suspends reality so that we can learn math and not be crushed by the weight of reality. That's what it is. We all live in a suspended reality because our overlords don't think we can handle the truth. You can't handle the truth, Brett. Welcome to October, everybody. <laughs> don't leave us. <laughs> just gonna be just gonna be math episodes for the next month. If math terrified you in high school, just wait till October. <laughs> <laughs>